There are a lot of trig identities that come in handy when you're doing calculus, but the good news is, if you're willing to do a little bit of algebra, there are only a few that you really have to memorize. In this video, I'll tell you my three favorite trig identities and show you how to derive a bunch more with very little effort from these three. So I'm going to tell you the three trig identities that I think everybody should know. Fortunately, all three of them are very easy to remember. The first one is the Pythagorean identity. That's the identity that says sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. That one's easy to remember because it's really just the Pythagorean theorem for triangles in the context of the unit circle. If I draw a right triangle with angle theta on the unit circle, its hypotenuse has length 1 because a unit circle means a circle of radius 1. The base of this triangle has length cosine of theta because by definition cosine of theta is the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle at angle theta. Similarly, the height of the triangle is sine of theta because sine of theta means the y-coordinate on the unit circle. So by the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles, we know that sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared equals 1, which is exactly the Pythagorean identity. The second identities that everybody should know are the even and odd identities. I guess technically these are two different identities, but they go together, so I'm counting them as one. The even identity says that cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of theta. In other words, cosine is an even function. And the odd identity says that sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. In other words, sine is an odd function. One way to remember these identities is by looking at the graphs of sine and cosine. y equals cosine x has this bilateral symmetry, so it's an even function. And if I look at the value of cosine at theta and cosine at negative theta, my graph has the same height, so cosine has the same value for both of these angles. The graph of y equals sine x does not have bilateral symmetry. Instead, it's got a 180 degree rotational symmetry, which is characteristic of an odd function. And if I compare the y values at theta and negative theta, I see that the y value at negative theta is exactly the opposite as the y value at theta. And therefore, sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. Another way to understand the even and odd identities is by going back to the unit circle. If I look at an angle of theta compared to an angle of negative theta, the x-coordinate, which is cosine, has the same value for both of these angles. So that means cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of theta. The y-coordinate, instead, is the opposite for negative theta versus theta. One of them is positive and one of them is negative, but they have the same magnitude. Therefore, sine of negative theta is the negative of sine of theta. My third favorite trig identity is the angle sum formula. Again, there are really two, one for sine and one for cosine, but they go together, so I'll consider them a single identity. These identities are easy to remember because there's a song that goes with them. And the song goes, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, minus, sine, sine. You may recognize the tune. Please sing along with me this time so you'll remember it. One, two, three, go. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. The only thing you have to remember when you sing this song is that it gives the sine of a plus b first and then the cosine of a plus b. So these are the three trig identities that I think everybody should memorize. Next, I'll show you how to derive a bunch more trig identities pretty simply from these three. 
I've written my three favorite trig identities across the top for easy reference. First of all, we can derive a couple good identities just from the Pythagorean identity. Let's start by dividing both sides of this identity by cosine squared theta. We can break up the fraction on the left into sine squared theta over cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta equals 1 over cosine squared theta. But sine squared theta over cosine squared theta is just tan squared theta. And cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta is 1. And 1 over cosine squared theta is secant squared theta, since secant theta, by definition, is 1 over cosine. So we found a new identity, a variation on the Pythagorean identity that involves tangent and secant. Now, what if we wanted an identity that involved cotangent and cosecant instead? Well, as you might be thinking, we could just start with the Pythagorean identity, and this time divide both sides by sine squared of theta. If we break up the fraction like before, we get 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. Since cotangent is cosine over sine and cosecant is 1 over sine. Next, it's possible to get a bunch of great identities from the angle sum formulas. Let's start by deriving an angle difference formula. If we want a formula for sine of a minus b, all we have to do is plug in negative b for b in our angle sum formula. So we get sine of a cosine of negative b plus cosine of a sine of negative b. But we know that cosine of negative b is cosine of b, since cosine is even. And sine of negative b is negative sine of b, so that turns this positive sign to a negative sign. And we have an angle difference formula for sine. Similarly, we can use the angle sum formula for cosine, plugging in negative b for b, and use the even odd properties to get an angle difference formula for cosine. Now let's derive a super useful formula, the double angle formula. If we want a formula for sine of 2 theta, we can think of that as being the sine of theta plus theta. So let's plug theta in for a and theta in for b in our angle sum formula. That gives us sine, cosine, cosine, sine, which simplifies to 2 sine theta, cosine theta. That's the double angle formula for sine. That worked out so well. Let's try the same thing for cosine. Cosine of 2 theta is cosine of theta plus theta. And using the angle sum formula, that's cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. We can rewrite this as cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta and get our first version of the double angle formula for cosine. But we could also use the Pythagorean identity to replace cosine squared theta by 1 minus sine squared theta. Or if we prefer, we could replace sine squared theta by 1 minus cosine squared theta. If we replace cosine squared, we get cosine of 2 theta is 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. In other words, cosine of 2 theta is 1 minus twice sine squared theta. And if we go back to the original and replace sine squared theta by 1 minus cosine squared theta, we get cosine of 2 theta is cosine squared theta minus quantity 1 minus cosine squared theta.
which simplifies to cosine of 2 theta, is twice cosine squared theta minus 1. So we found one version of a double angle formula for sine and three versions for cosine just using the angle sum formula and the Pythagorean identity. These last two formulas are particularly useful for integration when they're rewritten slightly. For this formula, let me solve for sine squared of theta. I get 2 sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, so sine squared of theta is 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2 theta. I'll do the analogous thing with this formula and solve for cosine squared theta. 2 cosine squared theta is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, so cosine squared theta is equal to 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2 theta. That's all the trig identities we're going to need. It may seem like a lot, but remember, they all follow very naturally from my three favorites at the top. While all these formulas are very useful, the ones that are of particular importance for techniques of integration are the first one, the Pythagorean identity and its various forms, and the last two. In this video, I told you my three favorite trig identities, the Pythagorean identity, the even and odd identities, and the angle sum formulas. From these, I derived a bunch of other identities, including a handful, that will be particularly useful as we do techniques of integration.